Hey, this is Michaela, and you're listening to Dan Lupinski on the Dan Lupinski Radio Program. Live from the south side of Chicago, <laughs> this is the Dan Lupinski Show. I am your host, Dan Lupinski. Happy Fat Tuesday or Happy Punsky Day. See the Punsky? Happy Punsky Day to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We had a little light snow overnight, uh, high 23 right now, getting down to 17 at night, and then tomorrow, probably sunny, 17 tomorrow, then getting down to 10 degrees tomorrow night, and then uh, up to 22 and partly sunny on Thursday, and then down to 7 Thursday night, so we're going to have a roller coaster of temperatures here, so, uh, but anyway, I'm going to, Griffey, you could join me, this is the coolest podcast in Chicago, but we'll keep you warm for uh, just a little bit. Uh, my my uh, guest today is actor Mark Allen. Mark, uh, I'm grateful you could join me this Glad afternoon. Say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. Great to be here, Dan. So, Mark, uh, talk a little bit about yourself. Where are you re- originally from? You know, I am a native San Diegan. I'm, I was born and raised in San Diego, um, and I've I've lived in other spots in the in the world, uh, Australia and San Francisco and New York. Back when I was doing uh, music production but i always seem to bounce back to san diego and uh, i live in a, actually in a town that's that's north of san diego a little a beach town called encinitas okay that, that's where i grew up if you buy poinsettias uh in the winter time christmas poinsettias 98 percent of the world's poinsettias come from encinitas so that's our claim to fame <laughs> which is really <laughs> sad i could think of probably some other cooler things but we could you know, claim, but that's not it. It's, uh, it's poinsettias. Yeah. Poinsettias. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a born and raised in, in San Diego area. Okay. No, uh, growing, 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 growing up, uh, what, what, what did you most, mostly want to do? You know, I think all along I've, I've always had a, um, a bent for being, uh, doing artistic things. Uh, I used to, do impressions when I was a kid ever since I can remember when I was a little kid I would do impressions of like Jimmy Stewart or yeah somebody right you know uh I even remember doing that for talent shows back in elementary school and and um doing skits and Bob Newhart kind of skits uh, oh I love Bob Newhart yeah he's funny like complaint department type stuff with Bob Newhart and I did that I I, I like the driving driving school skit or you know what's even better is that uh uh the the uh he was training a bunch bunch of bus drivers too. <laughs> it was yeah. that's funny, right? Yeah. So I did I did that and uh, but and I did acting in in school and high school and all that. It was in a band, did garage band stuff, and I was always a, I was a drummer since I was in third grade. I started out being a drummer, and then I ended up uh, playing bass and guitar and and whatnot. So I always wanted to be artistic in some sort of way, uh, be creative. Um, and then I was, I got out of high school and, and, uh, did some radio as a disc jockey and, um, uh, that evolved into music production and, 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 uh, did that for a, a big block of time. So how long, how, how long were you a radio DJ now that you were, uh, DJ in the eighties, right? Yeah, I was a DJ in the eighties. Uh, right after high school, I worked at a, uh, uh, a local San Diego station that's no longer around and a, and a syndicated show uh, that was uh, syndicated around uh, s- like small medium markets in the United States. And uh, I only did that for a little while. I, I did that for maybe a year and I just realized, boy, it's not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, but, uh, you know, it allowed me to be creative and it allowed me to kind of, follow my next step in the path, which was music production and, and, and being in a band and songwriting and all that. Um, so I did that for a, a good chunk of ch- uh, time. And I did, um, I was the uh, president of the local songwriters guild here in San Diego. And that allowed me to also be creative with other songwriters. And, uh, you know, that's where it all started. So as far back as I can remember, I've been doing something somewhere that was creative. Or at least okay, to no, me, it was creative. <laughs> now you you have your own uh, your own podcast show. Yeah, I do. Uh, I have a podcast with a, a great comedic guy uh, in his fifties. 
kind of leaving uh, the, the private sector for entertainment. Uh, his name is Dan Pastel, and we do a podcast called A Couple of Regular Guys, and it's available on uh, Podcast Nation and iTunes. Uh, but we've uh, we did it last year um, as an experiment because we were both trying to figure out what we wanted to do when we grew up. And uh, he's just a really funny guy. He's uh, really smart. And it's just, it's almost like that Seinfeld. It's a, it's a show about nothing. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> but we just, we just kind of ramble on and, and we're, we're, it's very clean and it's very, uh, it, we don't talk about sports. We don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion. So uh, that, <laughs> that removes a lot of the tension, I would have guessed, you know, and, and conflict. But we just have a lot of fun. So it's coming out. We're going to debut our second season on March 1st. Yeah. I mean, by, by, podcasting is the way of the future because uh, you know, a lot of your, your entertainment now is so more individualized, you know, compared to what, yeah. what radio was, you know, especially yeah. with your little your iPhones and all that stuff. So, you know, right. it's a different different, yeah. different world today. I, I agree. I mean, I think it just opened it. The Internet just opened it wide up in podcasts. Uh, you're right. There, there's not just one mold. I mean, there's so many different types of podcasts, and there's so much room for more podcasts. So, uh, it's an exciting time to, you know, be launching a show. Now, you, you, you went to the same school as uh, Eddie. Eddie Vetter. Yeah, Ed, yeah. Ed, Ed's. Uh, he was a couple years um, ahead of me, but we did some acting classes together, and uh, he was a surfer, like you know, like I was back then. And, and the school was San Diego high school in Encinitas. Um, he, uh, he had a different name back then. Eddie, uh, Eddie Mueller was his. Okay. His name. And uh, we, uh, you know, we, we would run into each other at, you know, parties or whatever, but uh, flash forward when I was a producer and here comes a guy in a, in a session that had a bunch of other musicians. I think the album was called musicians who care. And, guy with the mohawk and i had a beard and neither one of us recognized each other because my name was slightly different he had changed his name and so we're like staring at each other like you know did you grow up here or where were you from and uh so he he laid some tracks down on this album that i did and and then he said you know i'm gonna go up to seattle i think that's where i'm gonna head and everybody's like what's up in seattle (laughs) there's nothing in seattle don't worry about it (laughs) Me out this. <laughs> yeah, right. And the rest is, it's like the guy who didn't sign the Beatles. You know, it's a guy, <laughs> we're all telling him Seattle, is, it's rainy up, there's nothing up there. Yeah. But, uh, and then the rest is, is history. But, um, you know, we had uh, a good time. San Diego was kind of a, you know, we always lived in the, the shadow of LA as far as the music scene goes. And I would have to do a lot of my work up in LA, but um, there was quite a vibrant community. He was part of it. He had a great little band called bad radio and it was, uh, you know, pretty edgy and, and, uh, very cool scene down here. Okay. Now you, you, you helped, you helped produce, uh, Eddie Vedder's uh, first final. Yeah, that would be it. That would be it. I think it was musicians who care. Somebody had a site out there that said, this is Eddie's first vinyl. So I, uh, they sent me a link and I went, Hey, that's the album that I produced. So uh, I guess I have that distinction. And you and you worked with uh, you worked with Jewel too. How was she to work with? I like I like Jewel. Yeah, she was great. She uh, she was living in San Diego, and we would do sh- uh, live shows, uh, acoustic shows, down in a place called the Better World Galleria. And uh, it was you know she was just a very cool person. Uh, did a lot of songwriting down here with a uh, a guy named Steve Pulse, who is. Um, you know, kind of a legend down here as far as songwriting goes. Uh, never really made it to where I think he, he should have been, but um, he's an amazing songwriter and uh, wrote a lot of stuff for her, and she'd debut it at some of the live shows that I'd put on or I'd host. Okay, now uh, what, what, what made you uh, get into acting? Uh, you know... After I got out of the music scene, um, I, I got into the corporate world and I was doing, you know, project management and, and program management for various tech companies. And uh, the last 10 years, I worked for a company that sounds a lot like Smell. <laughs> <for computers. laughs> really? 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can figure that one out. What kind uh, of company was that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> a very, a very big one. So I had a you know a six digit you know employee ID you know, but I um, I I got laid off uh, after uh, a year of year and a half of kind of wondering when that phone call was going to come. They would yeah. constantly reorg and lay off and reorg and lay off and. Um, I was sitting there after I got laid off, kind of wondering what I wanted to do when I grow up. And uh, I, uh, my my son, who at the time was, you know, uh, twelve, maybe thirteen, actually, okay. uh, said, "Hey, Dad, you know, you do voices and stuff. You always are making cartoon voices or imitations. Why don't you do that?" And my wife, uh, Elaine, said, uh, "Yeah, you know, why don't you try doing something that would make you happy." So I, I got into voice work actually was the first step in all this. And with the voice work, I, uh, you know, I turned my home office into a home recording studio, okay. And, you know, for voice. And, uh, I did that for about five months at the, at the beginning. And then I said, well, I need something just to kind of fill in the gaps. And, uh, so I thought, well, maybe I'll just try some acting because a lot of voice work you're acting. You're not just reading copy. You're trying to physically, you know, you're trying to act out a character or something. And I'm not talking about animation, but just kind of any VO work that you do, you have to put some sort of character behind it. Right. And so um, I got a manager and and was lucky enough to, you know, get some acting work and that actually took off. And so commercials and then print work and uh, a few movies and, and, and TV shows. And so that really just kind of took, took off and, I've been writing that wave a lot more than the voice because I just have, you know, only a certain amount of hours in the day. <laughs> Did you do any cartoons or anything like uh, any of the Pixar stuff? No, I, I, I haven't. There was one project that was an animation uh, that that got scrapped for a, uh, a I wouldn't say a medium sized studio, but it, it, yeah. it got pushed back and I'm kind of not allowed to say anything about it, but um, it was a interesting experience to lay down part of the to lines and then find out that, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. That's showbiz, but I've done some work for um, some, some Japanese animation and what they call looping, which is taking Japanese and putting English, uh, words over it oh uh, yeah so you'd see a japanese cartoon and then you know there'd be uh english behind it like dragon ball z kai or you know one of those <laughs> kind of things yeah and that's basically a guy in there watching it and trying to make sure the dialogue fits the you know the pace and the movement of the that, mouth that, that, that's got me an art where you could try try to match the voice with the lips you know it's it's a it's a science it's an it's really an art that uh you know it takes a lot out of you when you first start but um, I've done some of that, and um, I do a lot of. I've done some new media, like radio plays, but they're on the internet, okay. so they're not animated. But it's it's like little, like uh, you know, the old radio serials that you'd hear uh, back in the '40s and '50s. Oh, uh, I've done I, a lot I of still that. like listening to a lot of that, you know. Yeah, so there's a Star Trek uh, series that's out there that I that I've done a lot of work on, and okay. uh, it's it's been fun. So it's 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 not animation, but it's definitely acting. Yeah, I when I was young when I was younger, I my mom was working down downtown Chicago and uh I went to the school yard institute on Saturday and uh I took some classes there and uh we we, we, we got into uh uh a class about old, old time radio. That's how I really got into it. And uh yeah we as a class we 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 did a thing called uh with a about a super powered garbage man, you know. <laughs> it was just something goofy, but it was just some something something fun to do with the class, you know. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I still I still like listening a lot. I mean, you talk about theater, theater, theater of the mind. Exactly. Yeah, I, just, I just like a lot of it, you know. And with the technology they've got now, I mean, it sounded so. I when I first heard one of the uh, final edits of uh, the one of the Star Treks I did, I just I couldn't believe it. It just sounded. If you close your eyes, you would think that you're staring at a TV you know, with all those sounds and stuff. It just was that yeah. special. I was very impressed. 
and I think it, uh, Jeff Lincoln puts it together. He's a he's an up and coming uh, guy in new media, definitely. Okay. So what, what, what kind of what, what kind of uh, TV work have you done? You know, now you uh, uh, you played a, a FBI agent in uh, uh, Criminal Minds. Criminal Minds. Uh, I've done some uh, as far as TV goes. I've done uh, a couple of things that have been on network TV. Okay. Uh, uh, a couple of uh, shots on Scandal this year, um, and a couple of things on Criminal Minds. Um, I, I don't know if there'll be any more this season for either one of those two. Uh, I did a few pilots that have that uh, I think one was picked up, so I don't know when it's going to come out. But it's called Stay, and uh -huh. that was directed by John Turtletop, who did uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice and uh, National Treasure, and those. And it was fun to work with him. Um, uh, project that's coming out in 2017 that I can't say what the title is, but it's something that everybody will really get a kick out of because it uh, it's a resurgence of this this um, uh, series that was really big in the 80s. Um, and then I did a, a couple other pilots. Um, I did something recently that just came on for the Investigation Discovery Channel uh, for a program called Unusual Suspects. So that was the most recent thing that, that was on TV. But yeah, I would say maybe over half a dozen uh, TV things uh, in the last three or four months. What was it? What was it like working on Criminal Minds? I I, I love watching that show. <laughs> so I, I walk on. I I had never seen the show before. Yeah. Maybe that was better that I didn't know it. But I walk on the set and um, in in walks uh, Thomas Gibson. I guess he's the lead guy. Uh, yeah. But in walks Joe Montagna. Now, to me, Joe Montagna is Joey Zaza from Godfather 3. So, I think, I think you know, Joe Montagna is a Chicago guy. Yeah, he, yes, he is. Yeah, he is. And so he walks on, and I had no idea. So I'm just kind of, I'm a little bit stunned because I'm like, holy crud, that's Joe Mon <laughs> that's Joey Zaza. Right? <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, uh, I have a bunch of friends that knew I was going to be doing some taping for Criminal Minds. A bunch yeah. of girlfriends, and they're all saying, oh, you know, bring Shamar ho Moore home, you know, in the back of your trunk. <laughs> and I did, I'm like, I don't know who Shamar Moore is. And yeah. they're like, well, you'll know. So yeah. in walks Shamar Moore, and I go, oh, I got kind of a man crush on this guy. He's kind of hunky. <laughs> but, but he was, wow. he, he turns out to be a really, really, really nice guy. Um, Aisha Tyler is this other lady that I've followed her career. She's a comedian and, yeah. Voices Archer, um, uh, Lana on Archer, and she's just she's exceptional and she's beautiful. And my wife even knows I have a crush on her. And suddenly she walks <laughs> in and she's on, and I go, oh, oh boy. So it 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 was fun. It was really quick moving. They did a lot of work for one day. I mean, it was a long day. It was about a twelve hour shoot. One of the days I was there, yeah. And yeah. they did five scenes. They just were nailing down a lot of scenes, and they were all very pro. And they were all very positive. And I mean, like, Shamar is a great guy. And we talked about his, um, he has a, a, a foundation for MS. And um, just, it was a great experience. I mean, it's it's always fun to go back on there. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, what, 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 kind of, what kind of movies have you worked on? Well, uh, the the two that I've worked on that are uh, feature length are uh, there's one that just has been released to the what they call the Coronado Film Festival. It's a local film festival down in San Diego. Um, it, it was filmed at the Hotel Del Coronado, which is one of the first places that ever had electricity. It's a gorgeous, uh, sprawling white um, hotel that um, presidents stay at. When they come to town, presidents come to town, they stay there. Um, and we are the first movie that was filmed there since The Stuntman back in 1979. So it was really an honor to, to be take part in it. And it's called Daydream Hotel. Uh, that That's going to be released uh, to the public in May. I think they're going to do a few tweaks and they're going to release it. The other one is a, a movie that uh, was done by an Australian director, Mark Petsky. Uh, and it's called The Potential for Beauty, and that's going to be released next month. Um, it's a Australian film, but it was filmed here, and 
Mark is a just an absolute genius. He's got a great eye, and it was a real pleasure to to do uh, work on that. Those are the full length movies so far. I have some short films that I've worked on uh, with a, a couple of local directors, Luis Martinez and C.G. Thomas, and uh, these guys are, you know, San Diego's got just a, a a wealth of talent around with directors and actors, and so I I've done a lot of the work down here, and I did a western short um, that was for um, the film festival circuit called A Thirst for Justice. And that was done by a guy named Rich Varville, who had something at Cannes this year. So, um, you know, I've been I've been keeping busy with that. Okay. Uh, where, where, where do you where, where do you see your career 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 going? Well, hopefully not in the toilet. <laughs> Good answer. Hopefully, hopefully gravity will <laughs> shoot it up. <laughs> no, I you know. I'm doing, I, I just did some voice work and some, some VO projects over the last couple of weeks. I will continue to do voice. Um, and so my goal for voice would be to be on a, maybe a, a, a recurring series, uh, maybe a documentary series or something like that. <laughs> and uh, I just did something uh, for a documentary. I did the narration for a Dr. Dre narration uh, of okay. documentary. But, um, and then to do, uh, I think my goal is to, to have some feature film work again and and uh, to work uh, on a series, maybe be a series regular at some point. I mean, there's yeah. it's going to be a it's an evolving process. And, I, and I'm really surprised I'm where I'm at now. I really thought I would be, you know, still scratching for some roles. I've been very blessed to have, you know, 15 major roles. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to more of that in you know, this year and beyond. You want to do something animated for us? <laughs> animated? Yeah, do an animated voice. Uh, what? What would you want me to do? Do a do a Star something from Star Trek. Oh my God, something from Star Trek. Uh, yeah. I I don't have it. You know, I don't oh. have any scripts. I I I threw them all away. <laughs> I'm I'm looking around my studio to see if I have anything. I uh, I'll have to get back to you on that because I. Oh, I, uh, okay. You caught me off guard. I would have tried to. What's at least you, you caught me off guard. I would have tried to print something up, but I don't have anything. But I my my role on Star Trek wasn't you know like a Vulcan or a Romulan. It was an admiral, a cocky admiral kind of you know, and he had that kind of swagger the way he talked you know and <laughs> you know, fire the photon torpedoes and stuff like that. <laughs> but I. Uh, I didn't get the, you know, the real gritty Romulan voices or anything like that. So <laughs> I, I just had the simple cocky, uh, maybe it was typecasting. They were trying to put me into the cocky role. Uh, I was, I was a big, big, big fan of the next generation. And I grew up, you know, watching Star Trek and I, I just loved it. You know, this is a show called I, Star I Trek. the animated series. Yeah. Yeah. This I, is I, had a, I had a bunch of, I had a bunch of my, uh, VHS. Oh, did it? Yeah, this is called Star Trek Lost Universe. So it's it's an alternate universe. So certain characters are not uh, the way you would have normally seen them in the past episodes of like Voyager or Next Generation. Yeah. They're they're reversed. Like Scotty, for instance, is a woman in this. So it's a very really you know, yeah. So, I can't you know, that. yeah, I, you know, we always thought that was neat how, uh, you know, whether it was Next Generation or uh, Voyager or or one of them, how they always tried to link themselves back to the uh, original series, you know. Yeah, uh, I always, I always think that that. I mean, I think that's just a great canon of of science fiction. I mean, the fact that the they can maintain a timeline like they have that's so far out, you know, spans what yeah. five hundred years, you know, from yeah. Enterprise to, you know, the Star Trek series to Next Generation to Voyager and Deep Space Nine, you know, all those. I was a big fan, too. I still am a big fan of it. I think the yeah. movies are exceptional right now. I I, 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 I think so. So, Mark, what, what do you do for uh, fun? Do you have any hobbies or? Uh, yeah, I well, you know, I, I have I don't know if let me see if I can move this here over there. 
our guitars. Can you see the guitars? Oh, so, no, maybe not. <laughs> you do see. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you play something for us? <laughs> oh. uh, you're a fan of Old McDonald? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Old oh, McDonald. Yeah, that's for... <laughs> Uh, so I, I will, um, you know, because I was a, a music producer, I, I did have, you know, the need sometimes to fill in like a guitar part or whatever. I have a ukulele. I have a couple of guitars here. I have a electric drum set in my son's room. And uh, so I like to play music. I like to go to the beach and body surf. Of course, right? Because we're, <laughs> we're in San Diego. That's all we do here. My little surfer community. Um, I like oh, San, Di San Diego. The weather's got to be perfect. They're just all year round, you know. Yeah, the average temperature in Encinitas, and I'm, I'm, you might disconnect me right now, but it's gonna, it's 72 degrees is the average wow. temperature. That's nice. And today it's uh, 81 or something like that, and it's blue wow. sky. Now we have El Nino, so this is really weird because El Nino is usually a lot of rain. Yeah, uh, it tears up the coastline. It's just, it's devastating but it's we're in a period right now there's a lull so uh this is good beach weather uh i like to cook i like to travel um I like wine <laughs> <laughs> that's not really you know I, I like to drink wine i don't like to like you know i'm not an alcoholic but i i like going and wine tasting and things like that okay that's cool so uh mark what, what are the links where anybody, anybody can look you up Okay, well, I'm on Facebook at uh, Mark Allen, and that's A L L Y N. In case people look look me up, uh, you can look me up at markallen.net, and uh, I'm on Twitter at at Mark Allen, and uh, you know I'm I think that's pretty much the ones IMDb. It's still if you wanted to find out what I've been doing, it's on uh, Mark Allen as well. So I, I mean, there's quite a few ways to get a hold of me. Um, a couple of regular guys has a Facebook page and, uh, you know, and I'm always happy to talk to people if they, you know, feel free. They want to IM me and say, hello, I'm, I'm always out there. I'm, I'll never say no to anybody. Okay. You want to give, you want to give a, a, a hello or a shout out to anybody? Uh, well, uh, Dan, uh, you, you know, Dan. Yeah. Right. In uh, yeah. So, uh, you, Dan. I, I give a shout out. To, hi Dan, give a shout out to Dan Lasky. I give there. a shout out to him. He's a he's a wonderful guy. Yes, uh, my is. wife um, Elaine and and my son Liam and uh, you know uh, just the whole San Diego community. We're just uh, happy to be a part of it. Yeah, I've not, never been there one of these days. I like to get there. I, you know, I've, I've heard so much about it. You know, you you come out, you come out, and uh, your money will be no good. Come out here, really? We'll take you out. Okay, cool. Thank you. Take you surfing. <laughs> <laughs> Never done that. I can't even. I can't even roll a skate <laughs> oh, the... <laughs> or ice skate. No way. There you go. <laughs> no way. That's just uncoordinated. <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, any any closing comments before we let you go, Mark? No, Dan. It's it's a bit of pleasure. Thank you for having me here, and and it's uh, it was great to talk to you. Yeah, I, it was, I, I had fun fun talk with you, and. Uh, Take care, and we'll keep in touch. Hopefully, hopefully, have you on again. And uh, uh, you have a great Tuesday. And uh, thanks for being on with me again. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, you have a good day. Take care. Okay, bye now. All right, that was Mark Allen, actor. I hope you enjoyed that interview. This is Dan Lipinski, host of the Dan Lipinski Radio Show. Uh, I'd like to make a, 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 a friend of mine, uh, uh, Paulina. Zakowski, she uh, sent me a message about a little boy, 11 months old. He lives in Poland, and he's in. in he may be losing his eyesight. And uh, she opened up a, a, a GoFundMe account, and I have, I have it posted on my Facebook account. If you go on there and look for that posting, uh, and it's for little Piotr uh, Robo, uh, you could uh, do, donate donate that account because uh, you know uh, he's going to need some med medical assistance to help. Uh, uh, you know, with, with his eyesight, and uh, they're also going to have a ben benefit for him at the uh, Copernicus Center on February 21st from 1 to 8 p.m. Uh, Copernicus Center is at 5216 West Lawrence. Hope you can come out, and uh, should be a good event. And believe it or not, I heard that uh, 
Caroline Barron and Daniel Jornick will be there uh, entertaining too. So that should be a good time. So please, please mark that on your calendar. Please give support if you can. It's very, very much appreciated. And again, uh, thank you for b being with on with me uh, uh, this afternoon. Very much appre appreciated. And you know, you know, see, see down here at the bottom of the screen. Look for subscribe. Click on subscribe. And also, uh, I have a Patreon account, and uh, I, even though I do pay for, pay for this broadcast, a little help does uh, help. You know, buck or more, and uh, very much appreciated. Thank you for listening. Thank you for, for being with me. And uh, remember this: no act of kindness, no matter how small, is never wasted. So you have a great Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week. We'll be back on Thursday, and so be here, be be square, and. Uh, uh, let at least one one push to know you love them, and we'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.